All right. Oops, I can just barely see the corner of my uh, my phone there. Here, let me zoom past that. Yeah, that's true. You could be living here. I'm sorry to hear that you're having troubles, though. Whether or not other people are having troubles doesn't change the validity of yours. Uh, and for those wondering, this is a color and focus checker. Um, I'm just checking and making sure I have my, uh, my colors accurate. Because one of the very cool things about Cocobolo, as you guys know, as you folks know, is the amazing colors it can present. Uh, I am actually going to grab some gloves, simply because ugh, my nails could use some work. Um, things are okay. Um... Honestly, life's been a little rough. I've been a little isolated due to California and Los Angeles being a hotspot for COVID-19. Um, but I, I've been keeping myself safe, and I actually do pretty well in isolation, being a hermit as I am. <laughs> um, but beyond that, yeah, man, I miss... Uh, yeah... So I'm happy you have a friend moving to L.A. I suggest giving them the advice of uh, being safe and following guidelines. So. I am going to start opening this up. Where's my knife? I should have figured out where my knife was first. Where did I put my utility knife? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, if, if they ever want any advice, like, I'm... <laughs> I've been in L.A. for a really long time. Um, and... I have been a, oh uh, no, I didn't make these gloves. I plan on making gloves. Um, hey Austin, or wait, no, check now Austin. Um, I plan on making some gloves, but gloves are incredibly complicated and very, very uh, difficult to do, especially with the type of uh, work that I do, which is more geared toward heavy things. Um, but yeah, L.A. is okay. I mean, like, the thing is, people just need to be taking the guidelines uh, seriously and will be doing better. My family's originally from Massachusetts, and I, I'm hearing that over there, they're, you know, opening up and able to go to restaurants. Here, I haven't left my house in a long time. But you know what we're going to do? Or at least what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk a little bit more positively, and I'm just going to be quiet for a little while. I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna show you what this wood looks like. Okay, this is how I get it. By the way, it comes direct from the mill. Um, it's not fancy. <laughs> this is this wood is essentially right off the saw blade. Um, so they just wrap it up in cardboard. And no, I am not worried about potentially marking up the wood. Uh, like I said, it is in a very raw form, and thus the entire exterior is going to be stripped away. So if I were to accidentally, you know, nick up the wood, it literally does not matter. I'm going to be nicking it up a lot more than that. Go ahead and get my packing slip out of there so you folks don't see my address. Okay. 
That's one layer. Senian, good to see you. Okay, here we go. <sighs> I can already see some really pretty colors in there. Hey, for the Instagram people, sorry for the earthquake. I don't have a good place to mount my uh, iPhone right now that isn't going to be connected directly to the desk. Ooh, that's going to glow bright. Okay. We're going to start here. Ugh. This knife is terribly dull. Hey, Viddy. How's it going? Okay, well, I don't like to do it, but we're just gonna use this guy. Much better. If you need to use your skiving knife as a utility knife, which this is a utility knife primarily, just use the corner. Oh yeah. Oh wow. That piece right there. Okay. Oh ho 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 ho. That's going to be gorgeous. And so, like, this is a really good example right here. See how dull and boring this piece of wood looks on this side? But then if you look at that side, you can see some of the color, some of the, the grain texture that's going to be coming through on that. And it's already shifting a little bit. This is, this right here is a, uh, I, I would call this, oof, it's bordering on private reserve. That's really gorgeous. Okay. Well, I'm going to start sorting these. That'll go over there. Yeah. All right. This one. Yeah. It's got some character, but that's much more straight grained. Yeah, it is actually already truly pretty damn beautiful. I, I love Coco Bolo for exactly that reason. And to be fair, this camera is also a bit desaturated um, because I, uh, I don't want to over-promise, so to speak. <laughs> All right, so that one's nice, but it's pretty straight-grained and fairly, quote-unquote, normal. Average Coco Bolo. Which is amazing when you consider the fact that this is what I considered like average quality. Um, the people that I work with grow all of their own lumber and all of their own trees. Um, so it's all sustainable and it's all really, really high quality. They take care of their trees and thus the lumber that comes out of it is very, very nice. Okay, that one is going to be interesting. This one's probably going to turn out to have some weird colors in it. Uh, maybe some purples and some blacks. I mean, obviously it'll have a nice black streak through it, but it could have a little bit of... Yeah, it feels heavier on this end too, which means the density is a little different. So I would likely balance... So actually that's a consideration that I make when I am um, sorting all of my wood as well, is I feel the balance on every piece of Cocobolo. And I'll say that the density down here is ever so slightly greater than the density up here, which means what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this area as the cup or the um, foundation for the falls. 
and this heavier, denser area is going to be the pommel, which then allows me to make the whole body um, slimmer while still making um, the balance a little bit better. So like if you see, as I'm trying to find the center here, it's actually feels a little off toward, the weight is just a little off toward this side. So that's going to be a pretty piece, but I don't think it's going to be particularly crazy. Ooh, that one's going to be weird. Hey to everybody on Instagram that's shown up that I haven't said hello to. Vidi Quentin, Sub Rob, Edwards Wesley, Edwards Wesley, excuse me. Rad Razga, Razag, Rad Razag. I like that. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that is also a really gorgeous piece of Coco Bolo. It's going to be a little simple in its um, coloration, but the grain pattern there, I don't know if the. I don't know if the Twitch camera is really picking this up. It might be a little too dark. Yeah, this is going to be... You can see how up here the grain gets twisted and it gets tighter and actually starts running in a different direction. There's a pocket of softer sap wood. Well, that might not be sap wood, but there's a pocket of like softer wood that's running along this side here um, that this hard, dense, more figured wood seems to be wrapping around. You can see the structure right here. It's the other side of this. Okay, I'm gonna brighten up the camera. It looks like, because uh, I was using uh, windows for a little bit of that nice soft ambient light. Uh, I'm gonna brighten this up just a wee bit. Excuse the rumble. There we go. ISO 200 still isn't isn't too bad. <laughs> yeah. Now you can see the grain pattern a little bit better, and you can see the way that the light is shining over that, too. So these also are unwaxed. Like, these aren't actually polished at all. The ends are waxed um, with paraffin, mostly. So, I mean, I love Coca Bolo, and I know exactly what it means. But uh, yeah, the end caps are waxed so that the blanks dry in a stable position and don't twist and bend too much as the moisture and oil runs out of them. Um, but the sides are still dry. So this is going to be a weird one. That'll go over there with uh, the other private reserve. And that's probably going to turn into an interesting honey color, which will then turn kind of a rosy orange. That should be pretty. Ooh, I already see a lot of darkness in this one. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be... Yes, absolutely. Growing circumstances, the type of tree. Um, so I'm going to get... <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at me. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a scale. So yeah, the growing conditions of the tree make a huge difference, not only regarding um, the type of like nutrients that it gets, but also the conditions under which the fibers are formed. So if you think about a tree that is like, let's say a tree is on a, a cliff side, this is your cliff, um, and there's a strong wind pulling this way, the tree is getting drawn in this direction, so all of the fibers are being built in such a way to fight back in the opposite direction. So when you finally cut that tree down, it's tr still going to have that tension built into it, and you need to wait for that to kind of release a little bit. And if you don't let the wood age and you don't um, account for how the grain changes and how the grain is fighting against itself to maintain rigidity, then you wind up with a piece that breaks cracks or splits over time. So... Um, what I'm laughing about, though, is this. This already, I can tell you, it looks very mundane. This so far is one of my favorite pieces that I've pulled out of this box. Um, it is very, very, very heavy. 
Uh, I can feel that the density of this particular tree was really high, um, which is great. So like comparing, let's look at the gram weight of some of these. Yes, yes. All right, so this piece of wood is 456.52 grams. This is 435. This one is 497. Like these, these two right here especially, these are seriously heavy, dense pieces of wood. And the uh, little differences like that can make a big difference in the way that it feels. 429, 429 grams versus 497 grams. That's huge. Um, so, to, the, to that end, this one right here, as I was saying, is surprisingly dense, has an really gorgeous uh, flame pattern that's a little bit hard to see right now, uh, but is going to go from really gorgeous, like bright orange red up here, down into much darker, uh, richer colors. This is going to be really gorgeous. That one's going over there. Uh, this guy goes back over here. Ooh, that's pretty wild. Mm. That thing is going to be like a, like a fire. Damn. I can already see how that is. This thing is going to shine like crazy. The chatoyance that this one is going to present. And here's a good example. That is the oxidized, poorly uh, treated peat side of the wood. That's what it looks like on the other side, and thus this is what the interior looks like. So when I get these, these come, um, they come out of the mill as a large slab, and then these blocks you can see get cut off that slab and turned into turning blanks. This was the exterior while the slab cured, while the slab dried, and then yeah, that nearly nearly like steak like marbling there. Yeah, that's really pretty, ain't it? Yeah, that one's pretty. But um funny enough, it's not actually private reserve quality. Um I'm sure that'll be gorgeous, but I don't when I choose things for private reserve, it's not because I want to reserve the only like only the pretty ones for myself. It's things that are particularly unique. Um, I make sure that a lot of really gorgeous and unique pieces go into my so oh, oh, oh yeah, that's gorgeous. Sorry, I got distracted. I make sure that plenty of really gorgeous pieces go into my standard offerings, and I actually do throw in a couple private reserve pieces once in a while just to shake things up. Woo wee. That piece is wild. Wow. Hey, sweetheart. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Jeez. Okay, well. This is a this is a good batch. Getting four <laughs> out of nine thus far that I would consider private reserve uh quality is a little wild to me. Like, these are all very, very nice, but, like, this is going to be gorgeous. Hmm, you can see a slight curve in this. Um, but it's, they're going to develop very differently. This is a much more normal piece of Coco Bolo. Oop. If you can hear, I actually have a batch of conditioner. That was my timer. So after, I've got another uh, eight. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got another 10 of these. I'll, I'll show you, and then I have to go deal with that. Oop. Okay. Sometimes you get Coco Bolo like this. It is going to... This is going to turn into... You can see there's a flash of orange. There's a little bit of fire that's going to come out of this one, but this one is mostly going to turn into a deep, like, black. Like, purple-red-black. 
with flashes of fire through it, which is going to be pretty damn cool. Whoever gets that one, I'm sure it'll be gorgeous. That is a very hard piece to judge. So pieces like this, super straight grained, highly oxidized. You can see there's some like uh, tear out grain is actually usually a good sign for me on rough blanks like this because it means that there's something in here that's going to um, have some grain twists that's going to create some interesting chatoyance. Um, it just means that I'm going to have to be more careful with my cuts and make sure that my tools are extra sharp. Hey, thank you very much for the host, Baby Tapir. Um, so this is going to be interesting. I see there's a couple knots up here. That's probably going to be cut entirely out, so I'm not going to even comment on that. Yeah, it's fine. They're not all winners. Hey, 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 hey. These guys are weird. Um, this is a type of Coco Bolo that almost turns, like, pink and black. So Coco Bolo is a rosewood, um, and rosewoods are known for their wild variety of... <laughs> oh, I could absolutely put these... Uh, well, some of them. These are actually mostly from different slabs, which is a lot of why there's so much color variation. But you do find pieces from time to time that are um, from next to each other. Like, if you find pieces that are of a particularly similar color, there's a very good chance that they're cut from the same piece. But you'll notice that these are pretty drastically different. Even the boring pieces vary quite a bit. Um, so this piece, I would say, is going to turn into a really cool, yeah, it, it's the pink and black. It's subtle. I will call it subtle. Um, I wouldn't say that it's like wildly pink. It's just more toward the like lighter kind of beigey pink, almost pink ivory, mm, a little, how would I describe it? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit disappointingly pink, shall we say, um, because it's not as pink as I ever want it to be. But the black comes through beautifully in these. So I'm excited to see what this one polishes into. Uh, this guy. Huh. Yeah, you'll be pretty. Let's see. Oops. Four thirty-four. Yeah, that's fairly basic gravity. A uh, specific gravity is how you measure the density of wood. Ooh, you can see that curve uh, right there. That'll be pretty cool. That also means that this wood is trying to bend in this direction. So with such a distinct like curve there, I might leave this one for a little bit. Uh, just to make sure that it's not going to continue to migrate. Now, let me check with a straight edge. Yeah. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a, a bit of a gap there. It's flat on that side. A little bit of a rock on this side. Pretty flat. And then there's a gap. So this, this wood, if you follow the grain patterns, you can kind of see that the, as I mentioned earlier, the grain is running in this direction in a curve. And as these grains, these grain fibers on the outside, as they contract faster than those on the interior, what you have, um, and these are longer fibers on the exterior too, or I'm sorry, on the interior running through here and on this side. These are obviously longer fibers traversing a longer distance. These are contracting faster and causing this piece to bend, twist and curve ever so slightly toward this cornered edge. Oh yeah, Coco Bolo is used regarding pretty sounds. Coco Bolo is used to make, oh wow. I'll put that down for now. Uh, Coco Bolo is used to make, um, uh, musical instruments for precisely that purpose. It has great resonance um, and it transfers sound beautifully. That's actually part of why 
This is a chasing hammer I made for myself. It has a white oak handle and a cocobolo head. Doesn't make much noise there, but... It's great for checking the density of wood. So, anyways... I, uh... I spooked myself with this one. <laughs> because... I wasn't expecting this to look like really anything special from this side. And I, I don't know if you guys caught it, but when I turned this over, I was a bit shocked by how beautiful it was. This is definitely going to be private reserve, so let's go side by side. That side is gorgeous. It's fine. That side is pretty. I can see, ooh, some nice dark streaks running through. That's going to be pretty cool. Same on this side. But what is that? What is that? What is happening there? Look at that. My God. Yeah, let's make sure that's actually focused. Jeez. That is going to be insane. So those swirls and spots and colors and shapes are going to run through the entirety of this piece. And any place that you cut through those lines, through those shapes, is going to cause changes, is going to cause additional blips, more uh, presentation of that black that's running through. If you think about, like, if I were to cut a curve through here, down this way, and up this way, you'd see a, a cross-section of this entire grain pattern here, down that entire scoop. It's going to be gorgeous. That's some sapwood, which is interesting, but that's going to be cur carved off very quickly. This is amazing. Whew. Okay. That goes over there. That is currently top dog, so to speak. And let's see if anything else beats it. <laughs> you know, I know that this is a really beautiful piece of wood and that inside here is a grain pattern that's going to blow my mind. I know that this is, even if it has a very basic grain pattern, I know that this is a, a wood with oils and fibers that are going to allow me to polish the grain up to an amazing mirror, vibrant polish. But I mean, come on, how am I supposed to compare those two? They don't even look like the same type of wood. Yeah, so that is why this is standard Cocobolo, which is going to be gorgeous. Uh, there's a very good chance that I will break this one down into ball handles because um, the... All right, so I'm going to explain some grain theory for a second here. Um, if you have a very basic grain on a piece of wood, the smaller the piece you make, um, the more... the less of that grain pattern you're going to get. But... When it's a very simple piece of wood and you have a large surface area, that means that it shows off the fact that it is um, extremely simple. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's not what you want. Um, when your market demands things like this, simple isn't always great. So this may be a good candidate. Ooh, it's got some nice chatoyants up there. Uh, this will be a good candidate for... Hmm, there's a curve there. Hmm... Well, I was going to say that this will be a good candidate for being turned into ball handle floggers. But, I mean, the more I look at it... Well, I should turn it round and then see what it really looks like. I'm glad that you folks are finding this useful, or at least interesting in any way. I spend so much time thinking about this stuff. I'm happy anyone else finds it interesting. That's going to be a pretty piece. There are some little knots up here that are going to cause some funky, funky stuff. Ooh, yeah, those nice soft curves are going to be pretty. This is another one that's going to have kind of a pinkish tone to it. And it's probably going to be highly chatoyant. Uh, chatoyant being, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera. Um, there's a little bit of color shift and change that happens in areas like this where the light actually goes into the fibers and illuminates them slightly. 
Yeah, anytime that there is a straight uninterrupted fiber, there's a chance for that happening. And when there are curves and waggles and waves like you see here, those uh, light waves then come out at odd angles causing a shimmering effect, which I hope you can, it's actually, you can actually kind of see it there even in the raw wood, which is pretty cool. All right, so that one's going over here. Hey, TTV. Bam Bam Gamer, thank you very much for the follow. I appreciate it. Ooh, that one's going to be dark. <laughs> when this one's done aging, it's probably going to be nearly black, which is kind of amazing. Oh, yeah. I can see there's... Very cool. I can see there's a, a knot or a... Um... That might be the tail end of a branch here. But there's some really cool waves coming down this way. And something I love seeing is that I have continuous lines from one end of the piece. No, it's, I wish I could get that into better focus right now. So right now what I'm doing um, is... I am judging pieces of Cocobolo. I had just got a shipment of turning blanks. I am a woodworker, uh, and I'm separating them out by grain quality, by straightness and complexity of grain, and uh, sorting out the really extra pretty ones, like this one. None of that is stained. That's all the natural like colors and complexities of the wood. So, being that I'm a woodworker, I like to separate out my uh, stock and make sure that I'm using the best I can for my best projects. This one's going to be really, really pretty. Yeah, it's really dense, too. You can hear the density difference. Yeah, wow. So if you just look at high high note, high note, low note. <laughs> Ooh, that one's really light, which means that it has a fairly open grain. Thank you very much. If you want to know even weirder things about me, what I'm making with these is actually adult toys. Non-insertables, I'm not talking about stuff like that. I'm talking about whips, paddles, floggers, and things along those lines. My gear, my brand is primarily uh, geared toward body positivity and sex positivity for everybody. Wow. All right, so this is gonna be an interesting one. This might actually be hmm, surprisingly low. So this is gonna be very pretty. Um, I would say, what are the grams on that? Overload. <laughs> okay, so uh, this piece of Cocobolo is over 500 grams. Yep. Comparing that to even this... Even this one, which I absolutely love, is only 478 grams. This is even heavier and denser than that. So just for that reason... <laughs> oh, man. I See, this is what I get to do all the time. You guys should see me when I unbox leather. I actually have a really cool video of me unboxing the... Um, what's it called? Unboxing the, the, the French goat leather that I picked up recently. If you guys are interested in seeing that, I could actually call it up. But uh, yeah, so these are definitely going into the private reserve. And this one here also looks like fire, man. Like, look at that. There's like, and like I said, this camera is desaturated. Like I intentionally desaturate these videos so people don't think that I am... Uh, like boosting up the saturation. I am on YouTube. Uh, Paraphilia Toys is the name of my, um, what's it called? I'm sorry, is the name of my YouTube. You can find me under that name on pretty much all platforms. I'm on YouTube, I'm, although I rarely ever post there. Ha 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 ha. I'm terrible at self-promotion. 
Uh, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, though on Twitter you most have to deal with my aggressive egalitarian liber- liber- uh, liberty-based views. <laughs> if you're not socially progressive, you're probably not going to like me very much. Um, but yeah, so out of those blanks, these are the ones that I would call private reserve. Uh, I can shoot you links. That's probably what I should do, you know, as a self-promoting individual. Here, let me take these off. <laughs> Here, let me drop some links in the, uh, in the chat. Da, 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 da. How's everybody doing today? I'm obviously having a little bit of fun. Whenever I get to unbox new materials, I'm deeply, deeply happily, happy. Oh, and by the way, when I was saying that I had a video you could uh, see, it's not up on my YouTube. I almost never post. Um, let's see. All righty. So, here is my official business Instagram account that I practically never use. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're. I know what you're talking about, uh, Sena Yen. So there's my official, like, company account, which I don't really actually use very often, um, because I much prefer to post to my private accounts, which are Paul of Paraphilia, which I just dropped into the link. That's where I post more about my process, my materials, all the tools that I use. Um, and talk about all my, my fun stuff. So, I don't know if schools still use those things. I would assume that they do. Coca-Bola was used for making sounding woods like that because of its properties of um, resonance and transference of vibration. That's one of the reasons that it's used in... Um, xylophone keys, like really, really nice wooden xylophones will use... Cocobolo as the uh, the keys, and sometimes people will use it as the mallets, which you can see here. This is Cocobolo that I turned into a mallet. Uh, and for example, these are the awls that I made for myself. Um, these are both Cocobolo. You can see how nicely it shines up. And I've actually never shined these again um, after making them. I've been using these for years. You can see what I was talking about with that fire. Where, like, at certain angles, you can see almost like bright lights coming through the, uh, the wood itself. There you go. Yeah. That flash right there, that's chatoyance. And I, I love Cocobolo for that reason. And you can see the variation in texture and grain and color that can appear in the same piece of wood. There's no dye on this. Uh, there's no finish beyond some wax and oil and a little bit of um, shellac. Right in there, you can see a little bit of the pinky hues that I was talking about. But that's not a very good example. Now comparing that piece of Cocobolo to this piece of Cocobolo, which has aged very differently has a considerably different color to it. Almost blood red in some areas. This is why I truly love Cocobolo. It feels great in the hand, it has a good, a good weight to it, it has enough density to balance things like leather falls, 
and it ages beautifully. All right, last thing I'm gonna show is this actually. This is a burnisher that I made. Here, let's make sure that zoom, that focuses. There we go. This is a burnisher that I made years ago um, that is made of coca bolo. There is no finish of any kind on this piece of wood. Um, you can see the red tones coming through. If I were to polish this, it would turn into a like deep blood ebony color. That's what most coca bolo turns into over time. It becomes this really, really gorgeous color. And if this, like I said, had a polished, polished, polished finish on it, it'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, this is just a tool that I made years ago. And you can compare how all of these, all of these are the same type of wood. So, gives you some ideas to the variety. To that end, I now need to pack these up and get them ready to go to the shop. Does anybody have any questions or want to ask anything or say anything before I head out? Because it is 1244 and I haven't eaten lunch yet, which I should definitely do. I should probably drink some water too. <laughs> which, by the way, if you folks aren't taking care of yourselves, which I'll say maybe I'm not taking the best care of myself in these, these trying times, um, know that I'm, I'm thinking of you. I'm rooting for you. I'll be here and I'm trying to, to, uh, to stream a lot more often. Uh, TTV, Bam Bam Gamer, thank you very much for joining. Uh, I super appreciate all the support. Oh, <sighs> yeah, it's pretty wild, isn't it? Like, and these are, these don't include ones that have some of the, like, really wild, deep purples. Um, I don't have any other Coco Bolo here right now, which is a shame. I'm currently at my, <laughs> I'm in my living room. Uh, I'm not at my shop, so these all have to go to the shop now. So, to that end, I'm going to eat some lunch and drink some water. I suggest you folks eat some lunch and drink some water if it's about that time. Oh no, baby tape, you're in Senna yen. You're probably well beyond lunch at this point, eh? No! I said that for years, too. I said I was a robot, and I was lying to myself. <laughs> Think, man. Even the best-made robots, those joints need lubrication. And as someone who has a lot of worry about his joints, trust me, you want these lubricated for years to come. These don't keep moving if they're not lubricated. <laughs> so... Anyways, uh, I, I'm considering, uh, <laughs> yes. See, how does, how does my stream, I don't even make my stream, like, adult, but then people are talking about getting oiled over there. <laughs> I am going to head out, because obviously I need some lunch. I'm getting a little loopy. I like all of you. I really like you all a lot. So, I hope you have a wonderful time. Be well, do good, stay healthy, and I'll try to do the same. Stop waving. Whoops.